Good evening. Welcome to episode 35 of Jeremy Makes Stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this evening, I am working in SketchUp. Um, a friend of mine got married last weekend, and um, I was talking to him about the wedding gifts. You know, they already had most of the normal wedding type stuff that people get as gifts like toasters and towels and whatever. Um, and I wanted to make something. So um, I had sent him a few ideas and he really liked, there's a um, two videos, one by Steve Ramsey from uh, Woodworking for Mere, Mor Mere Mortals, where he um, made a kitchen drawer organizer. And then another one by um, Bob with I Like to Make Stuff, where he made a kitchen drawer organizer with sort of two layers. The top was for um, the general silverware that gets used a lot, and you can remove it. And then the bottom piece was for the other stuff that doesn't get used that often. So um, my friend gave me the inner dimensions of his uh, drawer. <clears throat> they um, have custom drawers all throughout their kitchen, so there's no standard sizing or anything like that. So I took those dimensions and created the space here that would be the void of the drawer. And then I made the sides of the drawer and the bottom of the drawer around that void. I'm going to hide this void now. Um, and let me set the... I'm still learning my way around SketchUp. I've only done a couple of different things with it. Um, there's a setting here somewhere to actually show or hide the hidden objects. And I know you can't see behind the chat, but there's some extra. Let me see if I can let me, uh, let me dock this, this side and then move it over there. Maybe that'll work. Yeah, so you can see there's all these uh, menu options and things here. There's one here somewhere. Here we go. So I don't want to show hidden objects. I'm going to drag this back over so that I've got plenty of room to work here. Um, <clears throat> So I don't know that his drawer has a handle like this. This was just one I found on the uh, the online 3D warehouse. Just so I would know for sure which side was the front. <laughs> um, so with SketchUp, what I've noticed is um, there's a lot of really cool keyboard shortcuts. So I can hit O to orbit, uh, space bar to go back to the select selection mouse piece, M to start moving, and shift to lock in the a certain axis or something. Um, so a lot of neat stuff. Whoops. And uh, come on. What I think P is the push tool, which allows you to like extrude from a face, and um, R draws a new rectangle, different stuff like that. And the um, the interesting thing here is. Basically, everything's either a rectangle or a um, imported object. So I'm only going to be dealing with rectangles. The material I have for this is some uh, quarter inch, yeah, quarter inch uh, maple plywood, <clears throat> and uh, it looks really nice. I think this is going to turn out well. It, at least it's going to look well. I don't know. We'll see how this turns out, but. Um, Move this around here. H for the hand tool. Z to zoom in. Get this nice and centered on the screen. So um, to start, I'm going to hide this side panel of the drawer so we can see inside. So I'm going to hide that. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete this. And we'll start from scratch there. So at this point, I have the drawer, and I've hidden the one side. And the dimensions on this drawer are, let's see here, what do I have? 
make the ruler tool here, the measuring tape. This side is 17.75 inches. Um, so you can see down in the bottom, I don't know why I'm pointing, you can't see my hand on the screen. Down here in the bottom corner behind me, which you can't see, it shows the length. Here, let me move this over again. So you can see down here in the corner, it says length. Yeah. And so if I click here and drag across, that says it's one foot and six inches. So that's 18 inches. Um, the width he gave me was 17.75 inches. So I'm going to actually work towards uh, 17 inches, and that'll give some wiggle room on the sides too. Um, let's see, the drawer is supposed to be four and a half inches tall. So that's four and a quarter, just to make sure there's some clearance. And it is 19 inches long. So let me not move, use the hand tool here. I haven't figured out the shortcut key for the uh, tape measure. Let me see, is it? T? Oh, it's T. Nice. So inner length here, I have one foot and seven inches, which is 19 inches. So um, like I said, I made it a little bit shorter and I'm going to stick a little thinner just to make sure it fits inside. And um, hopefully that'll work out. So I'm going to leave this full screen here though. Um, I may do some stuff over in the menu behind the chat. Sorry if you can't see that. Um, I'll still talk through it. Um, there's a checkbox that shows the um, right over my shoulder here. Yeah. That it can show and hide the hidden objects. Um, that's probably going to be the, the thing I use the most often in the menu. So we'll see how that goes here. And. Okay, let me. I'm gonna pull the chat back up on my other screen so I can see what's going on there. Cool. All right. So, so if we have four, what was it four and a quarter? Yeah, four and a quarter inches here. I think if we go two inches high. Um, so I, I've just, I'm, I clicked the first click and now I'm moving up and I'm just going to type and it's going to let me fill in the length in the bottom here behind me. So that made me a line at two inches. And then I want to do another line at four. And this is going to be the height of the bottom section. And then this will be the height of the top section. So I'm going to do one on this side as well. Let me go up to two inches and then go up to four inches. <clears throat> so those are just some guidelines and uh, I can select those, remove those later. You know, they're not inside of any group or anything. They're just there for uh, helping. So if the width here is, I already forgot the width. What was the width? Um, 17.75. And I want to go about half an inch shorter than that. So 17 and a quarter. 17 quarters, 17. Yeah, I'll go 17 and a quarter. The problem is I don't physically have this drawer. I mean, it's not really a problem, but I can't test fit this once I put it all together. Um, I may end up building a box out of like cardboard with the same inner dimensions that I was given, so I can test fit the uh, the wood pieces as we go along. But, so, what did I say? 17 and a quarter. So I'm gonna get the rectangle tool, whoops, get the rectangle tool, and I'm gonna start here in this corner, and I'm gonna draw somewhere around to over here. And you can see it's, staying on those guidelines wherever I want, right? So I'm going to 17.25 <clears throat> inches. 
and that made a rectangle there. Um, now, <clears throat> I wish I could move this. Let's see, I can move myself. How about that? Let me rearrange here just a little bit. I will put myself up floating in the chat. There we go. That's better. So now you can see the, the measurements and the lengths and stuff down here in the corner. Um, <clears throat> so I've got this face. And if I double click, it selects the face and the outlines. Um, then, let's see, that's not what I want yet. I want just the face. I'm going to hit P to push. And now it's, I'm going to start pulling it out. But before I hit anything, I'm not hitting inner or tab or whatever. Um, this is quarter inch plywood, so 0.25 inches. And that is the thickness of the, the piece. So now, triple click to select it and everything is connected to it. Hit G to make a component. And I will call this tray. Uh, I don't want to call it back because I can just copy it for the front and maybe some of the inside pieces. Um, that's fine. I'll just call it tray back. And that'll take a second. So now I need to move it along this uh, red axis. Just a little bit, because right now it's all the way up against here, right? So let me go back to the tape measure. From that side to that side is 18 inches. And from here to here, trade back 17 and a quarter. So we want to move to the right a quarter of an inch. I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to hold shift so that it's moving along the axis. And I only want to move, whoops. Would it be a quarter or would it be a half inch? It would be a half inch because I'm a whole inch off. I don't know. I'm going to move it a half an inch. That looks good. And the kitty cat is visiting. Hi, kitty. Let's see. Is it 17 and a quarter? Yeah, that's fine. That's good. So now I'm going to take this piece. I'm going to go to move, but this time I'm going to hold control and it'll and then release control. And now it's dragging another copy. Hold shift to stay on that green line, the green axis, and get up here near the face and click. So now I've got the front and the back of this tray. And I need to do the sides. So since I have the front and the back, and there's a little wiggle room there, you can see the gap right there. But since I have the front and the back, I have my points that I can connect with the rectangle again. So top left of the front tray, and bottom right of the back tray. Grab that face. There must be a bird right outside the window or something. I keep hearing something. All right. So I've got the face selected, and I'm going to push. And I want to go. I don't want to go, you know, crazy. But I do want to go 0.25 inches. And triple click. G to create a component. And this will be tray side. Now, with the move, move tool, control click, hold shift, drag across. I let go of shift too soon. Uh, 
Ah, I'm stuck on a weird axis. Try that again. Hold control, click, and hold shift so it stays on the red axis. And right there, we've got the inside and the bottom section. And uh, the side pieces, the stretchers, I guess, are longer. And here, you get some nice amount of glue on the corners. We'll hold that together. This isn't gonna like be holding a lot of weight or um, I see too much movement other than inside the drawer a little bit. So I'm not going crazy with you know screws or nails or brads or any of that kind of stuff. Just some uh, wood glue on the sides. And I'm not gonna do a bottom in this one because it's going to set in the bottom of the of the drawer. So I figure I don't know what all is in this uh, drawer other than the silverware stuff, but I'm sure there's some other like I don't know an ice cream scoop, some spatulas or something. Uh, excuse me, things like that. So, I want to make sure <clears throat> I have a good amount of room. Um, so, I'm going to start with... Okay, well, first of all, to do some inside pieces across long ways, I can't just duplicate the side because the sides are longer, right? Because it's where the glue up is happening. Um, had I thought about that, might have done a little bit differently, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to start with this middle piece, make a copy of it, move it along the green axis here to find the midpoint. That looks good. And SketchUp is real good about snapping to midpoints and the, the little icon changing from a circle to a square with the various, you know, spots so that's cool so let's see I'm gonna do something like that and now another rectangle but this one I'm gonna go from this point here down to this point here so that's nine and three sixteenths and then I'm going to push and this will be 0.25 inches. Triple click. And I'm going to call this inner uh, tray, inner stretcher. So I'm going to move that out now. Um, let's see, let's go. Three and a half inches sounds good. And this one, how long is this one? It should be, what, half a 19 minus a half inch minus a little wiggle room. Let's see. Yeah, so 9 and 3 sixteenths. Um, let's see here. Make a few more, maybe one or two here and another couple here. And maybe I'll make a longer spot on this side for like some tongs or something, right? So, I'm gonna move, grab this guy, control, click. Start to move, hold shift. I'm gonna go another, let's see how far was this from the side again? It was three and a half. Yeah. Let's go another three and a half. I'm just going to type it 3.5 inches. And let me do one more. 
five inches. And maybe a fourth one, and this will be the one that uh, Uh, I think that's too thin. Thinking about like some tongs or like a, a grilling spatula maybe. Move this one back. That was three and a half inches. Let's do that. Let's see how far is this one now. Four and an eighth. That's probably good. So I want to take this middle one here and make it shorter. I want it to line up here. So I'm going to hide this one so we can see the side. And I, uh, since it's a component, I need to double click on it to be able to edit it. I'm going to click on this edge face and hit P for push. And I'm going to push this back. Oh no, because it's a component and it's copied three times, that's moving the front and the back as well. So I don't want to do that. What I need to do is make, make a new one for the middle here. So let me delete that. And... Start in the center point here. And I want to go. What was this? This was three, six, nine, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half. So that's a foot and two inches, but I want it to be on the inside. Oh, hey, Stinger. How's it going, man? We're having some fun tonight, and I'm floating above the chat. I see you down there. <laughs> so I want this to be... Yeah, so this is going to be 0.25 inches wide, and... Oh, what was that? 10 and 3 eighths long. I feel like I did something wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> I did them the opposite direction. Let me undo that. Okay. Rectangle. Just kind of draw something here. So this is going to be 0.25 inches by 2 inches. And I'm going to hide this one as well for now. Then do a push. And this I want to end. Is it pushing at a weird angle? What is happening there? <laughs> this is a very unusual house design, Jeremy. So tiny. Well, it's not a house design. It is a silverware drawer holder or at least it's going to be this is the drawer with the side removed from view to be able to access the innards let me see here now um, I need to move this up to that From using other 3D programs, I'm a little more used to having some different controls, specifically dealing with the axis. So this is just a, a little bit different. Okay, so I want this midpoint to come up, not back, not this way, not on the red axis. 
this one. There we go. Want that to line up. That's not working. I'm just going to delete that. Let's try this again. Starting on the line, coming down to the base. Yes, it's two inches, and I need it to be two inches by 0.25 inches because that's the thickness. There we go. Let me grab just the face. I'm going to push. Ah, that's better. So this is going to be to right there. And triple click, grab the whole thing. Um, this isn't quite right though because I started all the way from. Yeah, let me delete that. I think I need to not hide this piece. And rectangle. So that way it's starting not up against the wall, but up against the inside piece of the stretcher there. So what was it doing? Uh, yeah, that's correct. And now grab this face, push. There we go. We're coming out to here which is eh, one foot and one inch. Isn't that what I said earlier? I don't know. So let me take the hand, move this again, orbit. So I'm gonna move this. Oh no, I need to turn this into a component again. Triple click, G for component. Um, tray, bottom, inner, cross, bar. Move. Let me get around here. Because basically I want this corner to end up at that corner. So M to move, grab that corner snap to that corner there we go beautiful and then back over here triple click to go into edit mode oh no this is going to be all of these again because i copied them so that's not what i want i need to get rid of this guy now but i have this point here as a as a reference so Basically, going to make a copy of this one. It's 0.25 inches. <clears throat> Move you down here. Let's see if I can get this to line up again. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and make this another component. I'm gonna call this uh, tray bottom inside long inside long stretcher. So triple click goes back into edit mode, grab this face, and this needs to go. All the way to the end here. On edge. Yes, right there. Perfect. Swing this back around. Let's see. Stinger says, I would make a terrible carpenter because my method would be, I'll just eyeball it when it comes to pretty much everything. Well, I've done that. Um, it's not so bad, really. But I have some specific constraints and I don't have the drawer to um, try and fit stuff in. 
Otherwise, I might try that. But um, I know once, uh, like a lot of stuff, it, it really isn't specific measurements either once you get right down to it, right? Because I made um, the, uh, the paper tray for my friend's birthday. And I measured the outside box, but then I didn't measure the plywood bottom. I just, you know, placed it in, marked it, and that's where I cut, and then placed it in and marked it, and that's where I cut, and it fit. So, you know, it's kind of a mix. Let's see, maybe, yeah, I like that. Grab this inside one again. All right. So I don't know about this section. If just like one big section would work or if I should break that up. Um, I can make it flexible too, you know? Like, just grab one of these, put it over here. Well, that's not going to work because the thickness is, uh, the thickness of the crossbar makes a difference there. So I will draw another rectangle. There you go here to here. And that will be 0.25 inches by two inches. Grab the face, push. Right there, and call this uh, tray bottom back short stretcher. So, like I said, I'm not sure what is currently in this. Whoops, currently in this drawer that I'm making this for, but. Here's a larger section of, what was it, four inches width? Yeah, four inches width for like uh, some tongs or something maybe. Um, these are three and a half, or three and a quarter. These three are three and a quarter. So wider, definitely wider than like a regular fork or something, but maybe a, I don't know, a uh, short spatula or a set of, on this side it could be a set of uh, measuring spoons or something. I don't know. I don't really know what's in this drawer, I just know the inner dimensions. Um, I think that looks pretty good. I kind of want to put the smaller one over to the left so that it would be in increasing size. It feels uneven to me this way. So let's see, I think the easiest way to do that, <clears throat> measure this again. This is two and a quarter, and I want that to be three and a half. So if I grab this one, this one, and this one, and move, what kitty? She's so noisy tonight. So it was at two and a quarter and I want it to be three and a half, so I need to move by one and a quarter. So I'm gonna hold shift this way. And oh well there's one and a quarter. You can see there in the bottom corner. Down here, below the chat. This is one and one fourth. I got lucky. Usually I can't get that perfect with the mouse and I have to type it in. 
so that just that feels better to me with the smallest one here and then these three are a little bit bigger and then here's the long one it's also wider um, I think that looks all right what do you think stinger would something like this work in your uh, silverware and or junk drawer All of these pieces. And I'm going to group them. Uh, okay, it grouped. Stinger says, I leave the knife drawer unsorted because I love the thrill. I also leave the turkey injector syringe in there too for added suspense. Oh man, moving on the edge. The knife's edge. <laughs> okay, so now this is all grouped as one piece. It's so like if I grab it and move it over here, you can see here's the, the whole bottom section. So, that's nice. Okay, so I'm wondering now, what are dimensions of a standard fork? Forklift. No, not forklift. Fork. Oh my gosh. Dinner fork. There we go. Seven inches long. Um, what? Oh, that's pallet jack forks again. <laughs> Come on now. Here we go. Shapes and sizes of cutlery and flatware. Let's see. Stinger says, everything else is all sorted and labeled, though, just the dangerous objects are arranged precariously. Well, yeah, I mean, gotta live on the edge. Oh, my gosh. Bride's knife, butter knife, cake knife, carving fork, carving knife, large serving fork. Oh, interesting. Uh, I guess these are only lengths. A soup spoon's about seven inches. Fish blade. I don't know. They've got a fish blade in this drawer. Dessert spoon, seven inches. Dessert knife is eight and a half. Dessert fork is about seven. Table fork is seven and a half. Table knife is nine. Point six inches. And the tablespoon is just under nine. Okay. So maybe nine and three quarters inches deep. I'm not expecting a soup ladle to be on the uh, the top tray. Okay. So let's see. I think. I want to lock this in place so I can't move it by accident. Do I have this locked? No, I should. Okay. So let me see here. Large serving fork is about 10 inches long. Serving spoon is 10 inches. The bride's knife and the soup ladle. Sounds like a murder mystery. It was with the bride's knife and the soup ladle. 
and the wedding cake brides. That's the same thing. Okay. So those are all long, but not something I would expect to be in the top piece of this tray. But it does look like about 10 inches long is going to be the way to go because the table knife is 9.6 inches. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to start with, I guess, a plywood base. Over here in this corner. And... Huh. If I come all the way across... stuck on the wrong axis. There we go. We come the full width, but then come up. Yeah, we may as well go 11, 11 inches. So let's say, was that 17 and three quarters? Am I typing? I am, but it's not. I can fix it. Or I can do it again. <clears throat> this corner come across this way. Nope. Haven't figured out why sometimes it comes out from the center point. There we go. Okay, so what was I, how deep was I going again? So I think I'll go 12 inches and give a, a spot at the bottom across and then a longer one on the side. Some shorter ones across there, maybe. Yeah. So let me go up to 12 inches. Try this with the mouse. There we go. Okay. Where did my... There, okay, so the hidden objects are still hidden. And select that face, going to push. And we're gonna come up 0.25 inches. This will be the base. Um, tray, top, bottom. I'm going to make sure that's sitting on top, not drop below. Okay, good. And I left space on that side. I wonder... I think I want this base to be the full width and have the walls glued to the top of it opposed to the walls glued around the base so I need to make this a little bit wider unlock and I'm gonna hide this wall and lock it back okay so I'm just going to grab this face, this face, push, and pull it back out here to the edge. Oh, there we go. And I didn't want this to be the full width because, like, uh, the build Bob from I Like to Make Stuff did, you can slide this back to access the stuff below it, pull it back forward, or take it out to access stuff further in the back. 
So it's got some movement going on there. All right. So I need to add some walls. And I have this guideline I made earlier. So <clears throat> let's see. I can make a couple more just to make sure I get in the right spot. So I'm going to come from here. Nope, that's the wrong direction. I'm going to come out from here. Go to here. Make a guideline there. And then I want to come from here to there. Make a guideline there. So that is going to be my outer wall rectangle. From that guideline corner to there. And then I'm going to pull it in by 0.25 inches. Make this a component. I feel like stuff is freezing up on me. Let me save real quick. Saving. Okay, there we go. All right, so everything there. G to make a component. Okay, right click, make a component. Um, tray top side wall. And that looks good. So I'm going to just duplicate that one and come across the way here. Oh, my keyboards aren't, or key shortcuts aren't working again. Let me save this and refresh. Okay. Refresh the window and reopen the file. Maybe the keyboard shortcuts will work again. I've noticed that before. Um, I don't know if it, like sometimes whenever I tab to start entering measurements or something, it'll start to get wacky. Okay. Oh, works again. Okay, um, so I'm gonna take this one, triple click. Okay, it is a component. That's right, I made that. Remove it. Nope, don't want to rotate, just want to move. I don't want to move it, I want to make a copy of it. There we go. Come on, there we go, on the red axis. Right there. Ah, come on. <laughs> that was weird. Okay, red axis. Right there. Click. Nice. Yep. Okay. Um, let's see. I wonder if I go inside here and select this. And copy it. And come back out. And paste. Is this now... A single entity? Yes, it is. Oh, nice. So I can make this a new component and then adjust some stuff here and it won't mess up the walls. That's cool. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to make that a component. And I'm going to call this tray top inner uh, wall short. No, long. Since this is already the full width. Okay, move this guy over here. Come on. I really do have a hard time sticking to the axis. There we go. And I need you to go this way. Yep. Uh, right there. Um. 
Oops. Oh, I didn't do the, the front face and the back face yet, but... Oh, I didn't leave the uh, quarter-inch gap on the front of the back. That's okay. I can add that. So, where did I decide the table knife is the longest one? It's also the thinnest. Not that this shows the widths, but... So I think, put this over about there, which is two and an eighth. Two inches still feels pretty wide to me. Hmm. I don't know. These can all be adjusted later, depending on how it looks. Um, so I need to actually adjust this guy. Grab the face, push, and I need it to go back. I need to go back by 0.25, and then so in here, kind of get. There's a gap there. I think I can see it. Yeah. Like this face. Push. 0.25. All right. So I need to do the same on these. And when I change this one, it'll change the other one across the way because they are components, right? So 0.25. Orbit around to the back side. Push. Oh, I gotta select it first. Push. 0.25. And that corrected both sides. So now, I guess while I'm here, I'll draw the new back. So I'm gonna go from this top left corner to this bottom right corner. And that's 0.25. And I will call this top tray uh, crossbar. And I'm gonna move that and duplicate it. Come on, lock onto that green axis. Get right there, yeah, on that corner. That's not bad. Okay, so everything else, let's see, table fork, seven and a half inches, table spoon, 8.8 .8 inches. And, you know, this is just some random website I found with sizes. I don't even know if these are actual, like, this may be some fancy set for giants or something, I don't know. Double layer drawer, madness of Satan. <laughs> yeah, you know, you never, whoops. You never know what may uh, slip through the cracks. Hi, kitty. She's back again. Uh, link the party forks. <laughs> and buy 200 party forks if you don't have any. Um, well... When we have a party, the party forks are usually the plastic forks. Does that count? Um, let's see. The dessert forks here is just 6.9 inches. 
thought there was a smaller one too. Fish fork, 6.6. .6. Um, pastry fork and the oyster fork are both just a little over five inches. Is there a salad fork? The finest of where should be utilized for party forks. Well, the finest plastic silverware could be. <laughs> So what did I decide on? Seven inches, thereabouts. Dessert spoon is seven inches. So seven and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna do another um, guideline. I'm gonna come from the inside edge. And let's see, this whole piece is 11 and a half. So I want to go four inches up for that guideline. I'm not sure where that guideline is. Oh, it's way down there. That was weird. I'm not sure why it went down there. Delete that and try again. I want you up top, buddy. Let's start here. Go this way. Four inches. So then from here to here, seven and a half. So, hmm. I don't know if that sounds four inches sounds like a lot, but seven and a half is what I wanted. So I wonder if the four inch mark should be at the top, which would be right around in there somewhere. Yeah, three and a half. because that's four air and that's four so the question is if I'm going to do a cross section and let's try this so from here out let's go two inches maybe two and a half Here over 2.5, from here over 2.5, from here over 2.5. And how wide was this one? Yeah, two and an eighth. So 2.5 would be. from inside to outside because there's still that quarter of an inch so let's see where's my snipping tool so what I am thinking is nope that I need to make a bigger square <laughs> is either having a four inch wide section at the top up here or four inch I guess deep and then dividers this way for the other various forks and spoons or flipping that around and having the big four inch gap at the bottom and then the others. I think I like having the gap at the top because you pull the drawer out and you just grab a fork and go. So it'd probably be less used stuff up here. 
over here you've got a fork and some spoons you know there's some longer knife over here uh, I don't know a set of measuring spoons or something um, I feel like I'm flying blind a little bit since I don't actually know what all is going in on in this drawer other than there's some silverware there let's see and then there's the the other spoon or the teaspoon and the tablespoon I don't know a ice cream scoop or a I don't know, here's a pack of gum I don't know why the pack of gum is in there but that's where it went Let's see, Stinger says, you'll need that entire large space for party forks and <laughs> not need be divided. Well, but then the party forks going to be all haphazard like your deadly knife drawer. So I think I like that better with the, uh, the section divided in the bottom with a larger section at the top. Cool. Let me slide this over so I don't lose that. Where did the window go? Okay. Excellent bit me on my shoulder. <laughs> the uh, stinger says the the pile of party forks is the butlering staff's problem. Well, yeah. If I'm the staff, then it's my problem, right? Okay, so these dividers didn't actually take the uh, material width into consideration. But that's okay, they're just guidelines. So let me grab the rectangle here, top left, bottom right, grab the face, push, and 0.25. Triple click, component, Tray top small crossbar. Remove this down to that four inch. Hey, come back. That four inch guideline. Right, maybe, nope, right. Uh, there. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of some of these guidelines now. And there's a difference between selecting something from right to left versus left to right. You can see it's not highlighting these. It'll only grab something from left to right. You uh, have to completely encase it. But if you do right to left, you just have to kind of grab a little piece of it and it grabs that whole piece. See like how that's not grabbing. And then it grabbed that one. So. C. Stinger says, once this drawer is done, I suggest you initially put rarely used utensils in the bottom and then eventually use it <laughs> to hide secret treats. Yeah, you know, I could um, make sure this, this bottom section is the right size for like a Rice Krispie treat and Snickers and uh, you could divide up the, the candy nicely. Some of those uh, chocolates from the chocolate bar that I posted on Instagram yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. This morning? I went there yesterday. Okay, so these all being two and a half are not quite correct, so I'm going to... Ah, come on. Keep the first one. And... <clears throat> Uh, 
I'm going to use this inside face here. Top left, bottom right. Grab the face, push. 0.25 inches. Triple click, component. Tray, top. Short. Stretcher, I guess. Move this one now. Oh, with the outside, there we go. Let's see, I am beyond a treat drawer. I have a whole tower. It's open. For if one enters my kingdom, they know to ask before consuming. <laughs> nice. Okay, so the inner width here is two and a half inches. So for the next one, I'm going to go over two and a half inches again for the inner width. And for that one, I am just going to take this guy, move, make sure I'm on the outside edge, hold control, click shift, and put that on the guideline so it'll be the inside edge. So inside, inside, two and a half inches. Here, inside, inside, two and a half inches. So I'm gonna do the same here, 2.5 inches. And move, grab the outside, where's that midpoint? There it is. Control click, shift. And I want the outside. There we go. And again, 2.5 inches. Move outside, control click, shift, inside. And that leaves 3 inches and 3 and 7 eighths open for, I don't know ice cream scoop or something. Let me get rid of these guides. I think that looks pretty good. Now these inside pieces, they actually, um, from both of the videos I referenced earlier, the one from Steve Ramsey and the one from Bob Claggett, um, the inside dividers have a curve cut out of them so that you can reach in and grab the pieces but since these are all copies of each other I can click in here and let's see let me get the tape measure and I want to go first of all how long is this seven and seven sixteenths yeah so the halfway point is there, three and three fourths. I didn't mean to make another guide. Actually, I'm gonna, yeah, okay. Um, come up to the midpoint. Ah, I did it again. Stop that. There, that midpoint. There we go. To this midpoint. I still made the line this way. I don't want the line that way. I want the line this way. That's not the way I want it either. What is going on here? There we go. That's what I wanted. Whew. And then, so I remove this one. From this line, the midpoint. To here is where. One and a half, one, like seven eighths. So 
let me come from the bottom up to that point. There we go. And the same in this direction. Let's see. How far was that? One and seven eighths. So let me come one. Seven eighths. There we go. Yeah, all right. Whew. These inner lines now. So now I'm going to use the pencil tool, which is not that, it's this, the line tool, and draw a line right here, and draw a line right here, and then I want to come in another, you know, from this side, nope, this side. About an inch in both directions. And draw another line. And then I'm going to draw a line down the middle. Okay, so I've got some lines here. I'm going to grab this line. I actually want to move it. Hold on, I want that line and this line. I want to move those down. I need it to lock on that axis. There we go. Let's go down half an inch. Uh, Three quarters. Oops. And then I'm going to grab this line. And I'm going to move it down to one inch. There we go. So I'll actually cut those curves more curve like, but. guidelines now. Where's that guideline? So those have a curve to them in the center, so you can more easily reach inside. So let me now grab all these pieces. Okay, so let me unhide everything again. Unlock. Unhide. Unhide. All right. This was the dr drawer void. We made the box around. So let's see here. Now I'm going to grab this guy. Move 
move him up. Um, what is that? It's weird. Got a spare part. It's not attached to anything. Deleted, I guess. Wait a minute. Oh, no? Yeah? Okay. Weird. Um, and unlock this one. it up. Nope. Up. Up. There we go. Like so. Let's take a look at what I have here. So there's the bottom tray. I'm gonna hide this for now. Alright. So the bottom section with no bottom just sits in the drawer. The top section with the bottom, the little cutouts that can slide on top of this piece to access the pieces below it. I like that. I think that's going to work out. So now I've got to figure out um, what to cut. So the easiest thing I have determined is to make a copy. Lock that. And now with this piece, I'm going to make it explode. So I want to explode the group so they're all individual pieces again. Explode the group. So I can grab individual slices. And first I'm going to draw a piece of plywood. It was uh, two feet by four feet. So I know I've got a lot of extra. and push. It's a quarter of an inch thick, like so. So this is my sheet of material. I'm going to call this uh, yep, plywood sheet. And now I need to see how much of this is going to work out. So I'm going to set a material on this here on the side. Um, move this over here so you can see. Whoops. So there's all these different materials here. I want wood wood category and this is a I'll go with this one all right since this is maple that's pretty close So I'm just going to start grabbing these, move it over. If I put the mouse on the little plus signs, I get the rotation tool. So I'm going to spin that around 90 degrees. Do that for the top as well. This piece kind of over here. Yep, 
It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get a good idea. Nope, not that axis. This one. There you go. About how much material it's going to use. So, grab the next one. Move it over. Rotate. Push it back. Come on. piece oops Try and these up a little bit there. Ah, come on. I had you in the right spot. There you go. Ah. <laughs> Apparently, after it's in place, if I click again, it continues to move it, but with my mouse away from it. Alright, and this one. See, maybe I'll put this corner here. Oh, I clicked again. This one. Not quite right. There you go. Nope, still not right. Oops, <laughs> it was already facing the right direction. There. And these last three bottom pieces. It's interesting that I can't rotate them together.
Oops. Ah, come on. Stay straight. There we go. I don't know if this is a uh, kind of boring here. Sorry if so. Um, like one of the important things I've tried to learn is not only following directions, but also uh, making sure this is nice and easy there. Let's see, Gary Newman from Facebook. Hey, Gary, how you doing, man? He says, hey, Jeremy, I may have missed you saying this, but do you have to consider the width of the saw blade you're cutting the wood with, or is it negligible? So the width of the saw blade is called the kerf, and you can get really thin saw blades, or there's some thicker ones. Um, I'm not too concerned about it because I've got a lot of extra material here, and... Um, I'm just, I'm not going to try and line it up edge to edge. Um, I'm just making sure that I have enough in the one sheet of plywood that I have for this project. That way, um, I mean, there there will be some, I, I should take that into consideration, but because I'm going to have enough extra material, it's not going to be that big of a deal here just in making sure, because all I'm doing here is, breaking the pieces down and making sure it's going to fit on the uh, source material I have. And if I can only make it fit 100%, like width and height, then I'll know that, yes, because of the kerf of the saw blade, I'm going to need more space than that. Um, there are some plans I've seen for, like, uh, um, workbenches that you can build yourself or uh, there's a, uh, what is it, uh, a scrap wood cart uh, plan that's pretty popular. I've seen floating around. I can't remember who made it. Uh, anyway, it's uh, some guy on YouTube. And um, get in there. The His plan uses a single scrap of plywood, but he does not take the, the blade kerf into... Uh, consideration but he says that in the plan he's like hey the backing piece is going to be a little short based on how there's different thicknesses so um you should take that in consideration i feel like i'm giving you too long of an answer here you should take it into consideration but i'm not i'm just trying to line this up to make sure i've got enough material um hey jennifer jennifer on facebook asks what what are you making um well i give you the 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 short answer to that Move back over here to the parts that haven't exploded yet. Um, a friend of mine got married, and as a wedding gift, I'm making them a, uh, a some drawer trays. So they have custom drawers in their kitchen, and so they're all different sizes, and there's nothing standard about them. But he gave me the inner... Um, inner dimensions which is what I made this box with and then I modeled the drawer around that so that I have the outer dimensions of the drawer and then what I've been working on this evening whoops come on is the uh, some trays see that's locked so I'll move this one Like so. So the the bottom tray just goes into the drawer and takes up the the width and length. And then the uh, top piece, unlock that, just drops down that way and sits on top of the bottom tray. And then to access the bottom tray, um, you can just slide the top tray back, slide it forward, slide it back, or pull it out. So yes, utensil drawers, or utensil trays inside the drawer. Um, 
and I'm not 100% sure what all is in this drawer. So I just kind of guessed at some of the widths of the, the sections and stuff. So, and now, uh, since I got them designed, I made a copy and I'm breaking them down into individual pieces to make sure the um, beautiful piece of maple plywood I have, which is represented here by this tan square, um, is enough material. And as Gary asked, if the, um, uh, do I need to take the blade curve into consideration, which I should, but since I'm just lining this out to make sure I have enough, I'm not worried about it too much. And I believe my blade is an eighth of an inch thick. It's a really thick blade. It's got a lot of, it's, it doesn't have any teeth either. It's on a, uh, a small contractor table saw. Um. So I do lose quite a bit of material when cutting, right? Because if it's an eighth of an inch, it takes eight cuts, and I've lost an entire inch of material. So, uh, let's see. Gary says, nice to learn new words, too. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because the kerf applies to not just, like, saw blades, but also the width of the laser beam on the laser cutter and, you know, all these other different things because that's another thing with, like, lasers – if um, you're cutting out a square from the laser and then you're going to cut out another square next to it, the material, the, the laser doesn't actually cut it, right? It burns through. So that width of the laser, the curve of the laser, is removing material as well. So if you need a two-inch square, you want the inside of the line to be two inches. Um, and then if you have another two-inch square next to it and you only have a four-inch piece, well, the second one's not actually going to be two inches because of the the kerf of the laser cut, you know, there's not enough material to do that. Um, let's see, Jennifer says, I didn't know plywood came in maple. You know, um, I didn't either, and I was having trouble finding good material at the Home Depot, so I went to Lowe's, and they have a whole section of, like, uh, uh, plywood and really nice uh, straight lumber and it comes in like oak and maple and poplar and just all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and birch. So I made, um, I think you saw the, the picture of the uh, paper tray I made for my friend for her birthday. The, the dowel rod accents and the base of that was made in birch. And then used a paduk around the edges, which is this uh, African wood that's orange naturally. Um, over time with... Uh, exposure to uv rays and stuff it sort of turns more brown but it was like super bright orange with that really contrasting white birch it looked really cool my cat's still roaming around here <laughs> uh let's see so that's the that's the whole bottom piece that's encouraging because the top piece was less wood right um so let me ah that again grab this rotate that 90 degrees and move it over here somewhere and right now I'm just lining up this corner to the corner come on there you go well, I'm trying to line it up to the corner. Yeah. But so if I didn't go any wider than this with these pieces, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cuts with an eighth of an inch blade. That would be just a little over an inch. And I still have. Let's see, what is that? Mm, four and three sixteenths. So I would still have a three inch strip left on the side after the, the blade kerf cuts all the stuff out. Or after everything is cut out and the material from where the, the blade thickness removes out of the middle there is, is gone. I feel like I'm having trouble getting my words out now. It's getting late, it's almost 10. <laughs> 
Okay, I need to rotate this one. Come on, there you go. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one over too. Rotate 90. This bottom corner, line up with that one, and whoops. This bottom corner, line up with that one. Uh, both of them move. This bottom corner, needs to go down there. This is not. I'm not used to using these uh, type of controls in a 3D program. It's closer. <laughs> Come on, get down there. Oh my gosh. Just move kind of there. There, that's a little better. Why are you moving forward? Stop moving forward. There. There we go. So see now, this is a little too close to the edge. If, uh, if I was actually going to make those cuts. So I'm going to move these guys up here. And this one's kind of bugging me there. I'm going to move him over here. Not that it really matters because I'm not necessarily going to follow this cut guide, but. Okay, and this one, I'm going to grab these two together, over here, and rotate, 90, and rotate, whoops, 90. Snap those. It's a lot of just moving around, shoving around the pieces here. Okay. Grab all of these little guys. Hi, kitty. She just went barreling out the door. 90. And let's see now, I need to 
rotate these from the top. I've heard there's a um, plugin called Cutlist for SketchUp, but I've also heard it's bad, or not bad necessarily, but doesn't really work right. And it's for the pro version, which is the downloadable version. This is the free version. It's online. That's why I'm in the browser here. Which reminds me, I better save real quick. Don't want anything to happen. <laughs> save early, save often. Um, but I think I'm okay here because I know my what material I have available. Ah, did it again. Now these pieces will actually be cut out of squares first, or rectangles I guess, and then I'll tape the four of them together and cut the curve all at once out of all four of them on the bandsaw. At least that's the idea. That's the way I saw the other guys do it. Let me put it that way. <laughs> there we go. And then the final piece here. I'm so used to right clicking to move the, the camera, I keep right clicking and bringing up the right click menu. <laughs> so let me shove this up here somewhere. Yeah, so I've got plenty of material. And like I said, I'm not necessarily going to follow this, this specific guide I just made here. I just wanted to make sure that the one piece I had is big enough to hold everything I need here plus you know a little extra room if I need to make some extra pieces there's plenty of space around here I can make a few extra you know pieces if I need to if I screw something up which happens so cool I think that's going to work out nicely um, unlock this one Grab all of that. Move this back over here. And group it. Let's see, can I rotate it once I group it? Okay. So that's what I was missing earlier. I have to group it before I can rotate it. So now let's see if this one is like that, and let's say the drawer is that, and the inside is like that. So here's basically how it's going to turn out. Let's see, uh, let's add some fancy metal handle. Uh, well, I don't know. That object's not coloring. That's okay. Um, but yeah, so there's the basic idea, I think, that's going to work out with the top piece that can shift around there as needed. Whoops. Um, explode the group. This top piece here. 
can slide back and forth, get pulled out of the way, can access everything below it. I think that's going to work out nicely. Um, and it's 10 o'clock, right on time. Well, thanks everybody for stopping by tonight, hanging out. Um, Jeremy was here, and Stinger, and Gary, and Jennifer. Um, this is pretty fun, and I'm glad I knocked this out. Hopefully, it won't take me too long to make. <laughs> so I'll have to do all the cuts. I'll I'll remeasure all the pieces, right? So I've got the tape measure tool, and I'll make a list of what all the cuts I need. You know. Um, luckily everything is the same thickness and all coming from the same board so that shouldn't be any problem that way at least and then I'm not sure yet if I want to just um, I know I'm gonna glue the edges together and I'm gonna glue the base on I'm not sure if these inside pieces if I want to make some dados for these to slide into. Um, if so, I'd have to make them a little bit longer. Um, or if I just want to glue them onto the base. The only different weird part about that would be here on the, uh, the base piece. Since there's not a base, um, I can just glue them together on the edges, which will probably be okay. Or I could, on this back, the front, and this middle piece, I could cut out some little grooves, little dados, for those to slide into. Um, I know if 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 this was just glued on like that, right, and I don't know, you could potentially push it over maybe break it over or something it's not really meant to like hold a lot of weight or anything um, but if it was slid into a groove now it's got that extra support but it's also only a quarter inch thick um, so I'd have to take just a little tiny chunk out you know maximum an eighth of an inch and I don't know if uh, with my um, table saw if if I trust that with only having this much material extra <laughs> um, I'm pretty good at having to do things more than once which is a friendlier way of saying I'm pretty good at screwing things up as I'm trying to figure it out um, but I don't know we'll see how that goes um, I'll definitely post pictures once I get it together on Instagram um, I don't think I'm going to do a video putting it together, though. But I think that'll be cool. So, again, thanks, everybody, for stopping by and hanging out. And uh, if you like what I'm doing here, please, uh, you know, like the video, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, think I should have done something differently, if I made a good choice, if I made a bad choice, you know, let me know what you think. Um, and i uh, got a few more episodes coming up with some programming stuff. Um, I know the last episode with Tiger, when we were turning the pins, we had a bunch of technical issues, and the video cut off before we got to the assembly portion. So um, my friend Paul is going to come over. We haven't scheduled it just yet, but um, he's going to come over, and I'm going to have some ready to go, some that are already turned, and we're going to assemble them and put them together and do a video with that. Um, so that'll be fun. and. I don't know, that the last episode just feels unfinished to me since it cut off early with the streaming. But anyway, um, thanks again, and I will talk to you next time.